Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and for today's Linux OS review, we are looking at MX15. Now, if you're not familiar with this distribution, it is a Debian-based distribution running XFCE version 4.12. And I tell you, let me go and grab their homepage, drag it on over here. Here's their homepage, and right here's a little feature overview of the uh, current release. So we've got Linux kernel 3.16 for the 32-bit version. In the 64-bit version, we've got Linux kernel 4.2, Debian 8.2, and XFCE 4.12. Uh, let's see, it also talks about automatic installation of Broadcom drivers, UEFI installer, um, and they've got a lot of stuff that they've, that they've installed to make it a easier user experience and that's one of the one of the things not that's not been a big problem but as compared to Ubuntu Debian is not quite so user friendly at, at least for the new user it takes you a little while to you know learn how to install stuff and 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 do various things uh, so what they've managed to do is they've managed to package in some tools and set up a few things so it's going to be easier for the new user or maybe not even the new user but the person that just wants to sit down get to work and and uh, you know not play around with having to do a lot of configuration and whatnot to get things up and running so here's the default look of MX15 and as you can see we've got a panel over on the left hand side which is kind of unusual in, uh, in XFCE distributions normally we're used to seeing a top panel bottom panel sometimes both and I you know I don't know I, I don't think it's really a bad look um, you know it's really one of those personal preference things it just uh, like I said we normally don't see XFCE set up like that um, now, of course, you can go and move the panel if you like. You do a right click and go to the panel properties. Oh, actually, that's for the separator, sorry. Uh, go to panel preferences. And then from here, you can go and move the panel around and whatnot. They also have, for those that, uh, once again, the, you know, as I was talking earlier, they've added some tools for, for the, the newer user or the less experienced XFCE user. They've got these MX tools, and give it a second to pop up, and one of the things that you can do, let me find a panel orientation, and display default panel horizontally, click that apply boom gives you a bottle bottom panel and you know uh, essentially what you what you typically see in an XFCE distro um, now of course if you if you try it and you don't like that well you can come back to restore default configuration apply and it's back on the side now personally um, I really don't yeah uh, you know, I'm kind of I'm kind of mixed on whether I like that over on the side or not. But I think I'm going to go to uh, uh, go back to the bottom panel because uh, you know it, either bottom panel or top panel is what I typically am used to. So let's go and stick with that. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these other MX tools while while we've got this open. Uh, and on here you've got links to boot repair codec downloader, editing your menu, uh, tweaks for the sound card, Broadcom manager, um, uh, work with your network sharing, package installer, switch the user, check APT, flash management, panel orientation, user manager, and then uh, some creating live USB, persistence and remaster, save system to ISO, all kinds of good stuff there. Uh, Package installer is something that I really wanted to point out here because, and let me go and put in my password here because they've got some they've got some stuff in this package installer that we normally don't see in in Debian and you know without 
uh, an installer of uh, this package installer if you were on say Debian regular Debian Jesse you would be installing from source and whatnot so got all kinds of packages here and you know looking under audio got audacious um, audacity um, deadbeat you know all kinds of stuff here I actually use this if you come down to screencasting uh, to install simple screen recorder and uh, you know previously when I have when I have reviewed uh, Debian distributions uh, there's you know this isn't in the uh, simple screen recorder is not in the standard Debian uh, uh, repos so you either install some other screen recorder which I've I've used record my desktop I've and I've used Kazam um, they're both all right but since I use simple screen recorder all the time you know I know all the ins and outs of that particular piece of software so typically you know uh, I would end up uh, you know spending a half hour to an hour to install simple screen recorder from source you know this was nice and simple I could come in here I picked simple screen recorder clicked it uh, clicked install and boom you're off and running and there's a lot of other stuff that uh, you know can sometimes be difficult to install I mean un and under here under browsers uh, you know we've got chromium uh, we've got Google Chrome stable ice weasel net surf uh, pale moon opera uh, quipzilla tor browser you know all kinds of stuff that uh, um, you know not that you couldn't install it uh, previously in Debian but they have made it a whole lot easier because it's just you know come in here pick what you want um, like let's say for example you wanted to install a new cache we'll go and we'll click it click install and boom it's off and running uh, nice and easy uh, very very nice installer here so while we're on the subject of software, let's take a look at what's pre-installed because there's a few things here that uh, I wouldn't say it raised the eyebrows, but I was like, hmm, that's that's an interesting choice or that's useful, that sort of thing. So let's take a look at what we got and we'll start here in accessories. Of course, we've got an archive manager file, a uh, application finder, we've got a bulk renaming tool. Depending on what you use your desktop for, I could really see this as a useful tool. Um, you know somebody that is say in photog into into photography you got tons and tons of photos need to do some renaming might be really useful for you there of course you got the catfish file search you got a clipboard manager our calculator um, we've got a uh, the GTK hash for computing um, message digests and checksums leaf pad for our text editor settings for light DM greeter uh, live USB tool uh, backup tool midnight commander if you're not familiar with midnight commander let me open it up essentially what it is it is a terminal based uh, uh, file manager so you've got this in addition to Thunar which comes with uh, XFCE and you know midnight commander takes a little bit to getting used to a little bit of a learning curve but once you once you've kind of gotten your head around it really really uh, powerful tool so let's see where was I at accessories okay so we talked about midnight commander we've got our note tool orange globe time which of course is uh, time and date for uh, for XFCE screenshot tool uh, sensor view so you can look at uh, some sensor values for you for your uh, computer uh, we've got our got our task manager uh, through our file manager and XF burn for our burning needs and there's not much under development or education uh, but under games we got chromium BSU very very fun um, uh, scrolling um, uh, I guess you can call it uh, space fighter game um, very light on the resources and if you want if you want a game that you know uh, you're a little stressed out just want to blow away five or ten minutes or so go and 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 fire that game up very fun uh, let's see we also got L L breakout 2 and peg E which I those two I have never played those before under graphics we've got the gimp we've got our scanning tool leave your office draw 
Mirage, which is a image viewer, and then Shotwell for organizing photos. Under Internet, uh, Firefox is installed by default. We got GNOME PPP, which is a GNOME dial-up tool. Hex Chat, uh, Thunderbird Mail for our email needs, and then Transmission for our BitTorrent needs. And under Multimedia, we've got the Acer Runner CD Ripper. We've got our audio mixer, Clementine, for our music. Uh, excellent, excellent music player. And then we got GMTP, which is a simple MTP client for MP3 players. I installed GUVC View for doing my my uh, video. Cam uh, Kazam was the screen recorder that was installed by default, but I installed Simple Screen Recorder. Of course, we got our Pulse Audio Volume Control, SM Tube for browsing and searching uh, YouTube videos. And you know I've used that tool in the past, and at least to me it seemed to be hit or miss as far as finding finding YouTube videos and downloading them. Personally, I, I think it's just easier to go to YouTube itself and, and uh, go from there. Uh, VLC for our media player, and of course we already talked about XF Burn. For Office, we have the LibreOffice uh, Suite. New Cache, I installed that. You know, a little earlier in the video when I was doing a little demonstration. Of course, we've got our dictionary, our orange calendar, and globe time. PDF Shuffle is a really neat PDF tool. If you've never used it, it allows you to go and say you've got a multi-page PDF document. You can go and cut sections out, rearrange things, split them, rotate, all kinds of good stuff. And then we've also got uh, QBT View, which is a tab document viewer. And under settings, we've got all of our standard settings that we're used to seeing for XFCE, you know, the accessibility, appearance, um, Bluetooth manager, desktop settings, that kind of thing. Uh, we've also got some interesting stuff, like if we come a little farther down, Gparted, we see that a lot for, for partitioning, but they have Grub Customizer pre-installed, so if you want to make some tweaks to your Grub menu, uh, you can do that through Grub Customizer, don't have to fool with configuration files. Although, be careful what you do with Grub Customizer, because it is possible to uh, really, really screw up your uh, your Grub installation with with that tool. I actually did a video. Uh, it's been a while. It's probably been at least a year ago on on setting up uh, your Grub menu using the Grub Customizer. So uh, I'll, I'll leave a link down below if you want to check that out uh, because it kind of goes into more detail than I got time for right now. So and let's see, we got some of the other setting, you know, our mouse and and all that kind of stuff. We talked about the panel orientation tool a little earlier ago. Some of those other MX tools, and let's see, um, setting up our Samba. If you if you're working with network drives, uh, screensaver tool, uh, Synaptic Package Manager for our package manager. Uh, love love Synaptic. And in fact, on Ubuntu distributions, where they have the Ubuntu Software Center, Synaptic is usually the first thing that I install so that I can avoid the Ubuntu uh, Software Center. And let's get let's go down to System. Bleachbit is installed by default. So, if you're coming from a Windows environment and are familiar with CC Cleaner, you can think of Bleachbit as CC Cleaner for for Linux. Uh, of course, we already talked about the bulk renaming tool. We've got our disk management tool, uh, disk usage analyzer, uh, firewall configuration. We've got the GDB package installer. So if you've got, if you download a a uh, Debian file or a Debian package, you can use GDB to install it. We already talked about Gparted, Grub Customizer, Midnight Commands. Most of this we've already seen before it just ends up that in the menu a lot of things end up in more than one category our printing configurations there's Samba again task scheduler um, most of this other stuff we've we've looked at before in other distributions so just some general observations about the distribution first of all everything 
very stable no issues with crashing and burning things not working everything worked right out of the box um, very stable so so everything is great as far as that goes um, one thing I did notice and and I've I picked up on this on other Debian distributions uh, if you're com uh, when it comes time to update or install packages install different pieces of software it takes much longer as compared to uh, as compared to Ubuntu based distributions and and by taking longer I don't mean uh, you know there's more steps involved I just mean the actual amount of time it takes from the time you click install to the time that something is installed or or in the case of updating from the time you click update until the updates are finished the amount of time it takes for the updates or installation to take place and like I said I've noticed this with other Debian distributions I think it's just kind of an aspect of Debian um, so if you're coming from Ubuntu you know you're gonna be geez why is why is this taking so long to update why is it taking so long to uh, you, you know to install this piece of software uh, I think it's just the nature of the beast when it comes to Debian um, but you know uh, like I said very stable so uh, you know I'm not gonna really knock it for taking longer to do updates you know it's it's just one of those things that uh, it, it kind of goes along with the distribution um, you know the layout on the desktop I wasn't you know I keep going back and forth on that uh, you know having the uh, having the panel all along the side as opposed to the top or bottom um, and maybe a big part of it just comes from I am used to seeing it on the top and bottom and and uh, you know the sidebar kind of thing was kind of foreign I, and, and really if you think about it about the only uh, desktop where you see that sidebar by default is in in Ubuntu unity and really that's just a launcher you still have a panel across the top overall I'm really really happy with this distribution it's nice and lightweight you know we're running XFCE so it's really light on the resources but at the same time you know it's fairly customizable they've included a lot of tools that overcome I wouldn't say shortcomings of Debian but some of the aspects that aren't quite um, new user friendly so you know it's it it they've made it easier to install packages that we normally don't see in the in the Debian pipeline um, you know the various configuration tools a lot of software is pre-installed so the, you know this distro has got a lot going for it so definitely worth taking a look at uh, and having said that I think that just about finishes this review up I hope that you found it useful definitely give this distro a try as always leave comments questions all that kind of stuff down below and I will try to get to them as soon as possible and give us a big old thumbs up if you like the video and I hope to see you all on my next video thanks a lot